Hi everyone, welcome to the QAOps channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and today we're going to be setting up uh, Circle CI to run our test. Right, so far we only have uh, the build task, but now we're going to actually set up our test there to run Circle CI. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the notifications of my next videos, and let's start. So if we take a look here what, what we have this is what we have right there are some minor tweaks that i need to do because uh there was some issues uh with the image that we had here uh before so this is so the image here is we need to use the java 15 image right and also our build gradle is not here our, our build gradle is on our app build gradle so i need to say app build gradle in here app build gradle right so that's the only thing we need to do here, right here and now we need to actually set up our test right so i'm going to call so this needs to be in the the same route as build so i need to come here and i and i need to say i'm going to call this sanity tests right Great, so let me open that up. So it needs to be in the same, it's a sibling, right? So I'm going to say, I want a Docker image, right? And the Docker image that I want is the Java one, right? So I'm using the Java uh, OpenJDK 15. Another image that I want is the uh, our application, the Swagger, application right so that's another image that i want if we take a look at our owner library we so let me go to config support config server config our owner library is going to define which property are we going to use right so if there is this variable called env it's going to use that variable if that variable is not found, it's going to look the local properties, right? And the properties that we have it's circle local dot properties and circle dot properties. So now I need to send this env variable. So I can I can tell it say I want an environment variable. An environment, right? And this is the variable that I that I need to have. So this is env and the value it's circle. So it's going to replace env with this env and with the value circle, which is circle properties, right? So another thing that I need to tell it's my working directory. This is where Circle CI is going to download the repository. So the repository is going to be here in repo, and I need to tell the steps. Right. The first step is I want to check out. I want to get the code. So I miss, I miss a dash. I want to get the code. Right. I, I want to, whatever code was sent, I want to check that out and I'm going to lock that code. So that's the code that I'm going to work. And now I need to say I want to attach to the workspace. So this is a CD. I'm, I'm, I'm entering that workspace. Right. And the, the workspace that I'm joining is repo, right? Now I need to restore the cache, restore cache. So from previous video, we are saving the cache and we are persist, persisting the cache. So now I'm, I'm, I'm actually restoring that cache and I'm going to use that same value here. So this is the cache that we are going to restore. Sorry, I missed the keys. So it's keys and whatever I'm restoring, All right? Now I need to actually run the test. So right, so far we only set it up, right? So we are we are using our images, our uh, environment variables. Uh, our repository directory, why not? Now, I'm going to say I need to, you to run. I need you to run
and I need to tell what I want to run. So I'm going to create something that uh, it's going to give it a name called Sanity Cucumber Test. You can give it whatever name you want. This is just to display. And I'm going to tell the commands. I can type Gradle, the Gradle command that we're going to use, and the Gradle command that we're going to use is Sanity Test. Right. But I might have multiple commands. So for me to have multiple commands, I put a pipe, which is this vertical bar. And now I pass the commands that I want. I might have another command, extra command. Like I, I, I might have as many commands as I need. I only have one. And now I'm, I need to tell it when it should run. This should run always. Right. Every time this should run. Now what I need to do is I need to tell where is my test results and where are my artifacts. So I can say store test results, and this is going to be very important. And my test result pass is, if you take a look here, is app build test results. So it's going to be app build test results. And now, so I want to store my artifacts. Artifacts. The test result and the path as well. The test result is the XML test results. So these are my XML test results for JUnit. My artifact is my Cucumber report, my HML. So I'm going to say app builder. build slash reports and it's going to figure out by itself uh what needs to do right so now i can push this update circle sanity create create circles ci sanity job and i can push it we can take a look here. It's going to pick it up, right? And I can inspect. So it's spinning up the environment. I already had some pieces and bits of the container. This is the magic of container, right? You already found some pieces and it's only going to download whatever it does not have. So it prepared whatever environment variable it needed. Uh, it checked out the code. So it, it got the code. Restore the cache. See, it, it was able to find the cache. Uh, it downloaded whatever dependencies it was missing, if there was any. It saved the cache, right? But here it already exists, but it was successful. And it persisted the cache into a, a our workspace. Um, if you go back here now, uh, we that's the only thing we do have. That's the build, right? And that's interesting because what happens with the sun test, right? Why, why is not there, right? So the only thing that he found was the build because it was the first one. So what you need to tell to CircleCI is workflows. That's how you can say this is my this is my order of things to run. And I'm going to go real quickly with this one because. Uh, we are going to go through this in the next video on, on a detailed strategy for a pipeline. But what I, we need to do is I need to say my workflow version is 2. All right. And then I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call QAOps, uh, QAOps BDD. And now I need to tell which jobs I want to run. And the name of the jobs is the same as here. So did a build job and send test. So I need to use that same naming. So it's build, right? And the other one is sanity tests. But here I'm going to say requires build. So I'm pretty much saying I only want the sun to run after the build was run. Right? So create 
Shiai Wokpo. It's going to pick it up. It's going now. Sunt is already here. Right? If I click on my workflow now, I have a nice pipeline, right? So I'm going to come back as soon as this finishes. So if we can take a look at the Santi, what the Santi is doing, the Santi spin up the environment. It's a Docker environment. It's running the container, right, with our application. It's preparing, checking out the code, attaching the workspace, restoring the cache that we saved previously, and now it's running our tests. And it finished. Everything passed, right? I can take a look at our tests, and I had four jobs passing, four tests passing in our sanity. I have the artifacts, which all the uh, HTML. So if I click here, I have access to the Cucumber report, right? So one of, the, one of the things that I want to show you is why uh, I thought it was important to separate this, right? Why we need to have a store test results and a store artifact. So let's forge a failure. So let's go to our sanity test um, store. Yep. And I'm going to make this fail. I'm going to just say the quantity of here was 100. Make test fail. And I'm going to come back as soon as this finishes. Okay. So now if you take a look, it failed. And when I click here, I have that it was, it was failed, something failed, but I'm, I'm not really sure what happened, right? So my artifact, I'm able to click here and see what happened, right? But then I have to click on artifact and then click on the report. But if I click on test results, on tests, I already have my my failure, my, my, my the, the test that failed, right? So if I come back here, I click here. I already have this. This was it took a little a little longer to load, but I already have a, not a snapshot of what happened. And if I click here, I also can see what happened in exactly what happened. So I don't need to navigate to anything else. I just have my snapshot of my test results. And my artifact is just a nice HTML that's going to help uh, you have a, a, a better readability. But here is going to make your life simpler because just click on the test tab and you have access to everything that failed and why, right? It was our failure because it was expecting 100, but it was actually 10, right? So that's basically it. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you. 
Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. So that's basically it. Uh, next video, we're going to create our pipeline and I'm going to show you different ways of uh, what you can do in our pipeline, what kind of strategy that you have. Because here you see uh, the build and then the sun test, but you can, you can change this the way that you please. You can run in parallel, you can run in a pipeline, that's up to you. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the notifications of my next videos. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up. And it's really important that you do because that's how the channel can keep growing. And I see you next video.